although it is actually a type of fungus. The invading rust fungus has penetrated deep inside the plant tissue. As the invasion progresses, the fungus produces spores. These spores erupt from the surface of the plant. The spores spread, creating pustules, new sites of infection. Soon the plant's stem and leaves are covered in fungal growth. Carried by wind, the fungal spores can travel great distances, eventually reaching other potential hosts. This spore must now find the nutrients it requires to grow. Sending out the germ tube, it seeks an entry point into the plant. A newly formed penetration tube breaks inside the stem and the fungus extends further into the plant. Once inside the stem, another structure called the haustorium is used to penetrate inside one of the plant's cells. The fungus can now take nutrients from within the plant. It also begins to secrete small protein molecules called effectors. This is a critical time for the plant. If it can detect the fungal effector proteins, it can try to stop the invasion. The plant has specialised resistance proteins which act like an immune system. The resistance proteins can bind to the fungal effector proteins. This binding event alerts the plant that an infection is taking place. Now that the parasite is detected, the infected cells are sacrificed cutting off the energy supply to the invader. The fungus will eventually starve and the plant can continue to grow. New strains of fungi are constantly developing through evolution. This can make some plants vulnerable to infection. Diseases like rust fungus have plagued crop production since people first began farming. <laughs>